a little bit of an unusual one today, if I'm honest. This is not the sort of thing I typically review here on the channel, but I couldn't sort of pass it up. It was too ridiculous. Now this is a coffee machine from Aldi, a supermarket group you may be familiar with, a place that's really cheap, but people tend to be like, oh, but the wine's really good. I don't shop at Aldi, not out of any real snobbery or anything. I just don't have one near me, so, you know, I'm not dissing you, Aldi. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just not, you know, a customer. But people are, and people like it, and I shouldn't joke about the whole wine obsession people have with it. It's getting off topic. Aldi do cheap stuff that people say is surprisingly good. And so when Aldi dropped this, well, I had to have a look. It's a 299 pound coffee machine. It's a kind of super automatic in a way. It's got a built-in grinder, but it is portafilter based. Comparable, I guess, to machines like the Sage Barista Express, uh, which is twice the price, and DeLonghi's very Sage-like La Specialista, that's again, the same sort of price. Though that one has a pressurized portafilter, so I kind of put that off to the side. This has a regular portafilter with proper holes and everything. In fact, it's got quite a fancy portafilter. Not only is it really quite a nice little handle on this thing here, but they've even got like a little rubberized flat bit on the bottom for your tamping. How thoughtful, how considerate, how surprising for 299 pounds. Though it doesn't come with a dose recommendation, just a little max line on the side. We'll get into brewing coffee with this in a second. I've just turned it on, I've got it hot. I have yet to make coffee with it. Now it's got a little steam wand. The steam settings on the side here imply that it's it's one thermoblock heating everything because you've got to put the, the machine into preheat mode, which I presume heats that main thermoblock up super hot and then you can get steam out of it. You'd then probably have to cool it down afterwards to get coffee out of it again. That's not unusual in a cheaper machine. But, but a grinder in a cheaper machine is definitely a, a surprising thing. It is pretty bad design. It, it looks like it's okay, but you know, stuff like the badly stuck on badge here that's just not quite level, or the fact that the drip tray appears to be designed to be whatever space is left and therefore not really enough space to put like three cups on top. It's just a little car crash up here so far. But hey, it's early. Let's not judge too much. Let's, let's put some coffee in it. Now, this isn't just like a, hey, look, here's a weird cheap thing that's surprisingly cheap. But the question is, is it good value for money? You know, just because it's cheap, it might be terrible value for money if it just can't make anything resembling vaguely good espresso. But if it can make good espresso, that would be astonishing, wouldn't it? Though, it feels unlikely at this point. I mean, unwrapping this thing, it was not your nice, like, peel off the nice plastic from the stainless steel. It was more like just, like, wrapped a couple times in cling film in a slightly sloppy, forgetful way that doesn't you know, inspire confidence when you're opening a coffee machine up. Doesn't do a particularly good job of protecting it either, it would seem, from the scratches on the side. We're getting off the point. So, let's let's make some coffee with this, I think. Oops. Uh, we've got we've got a good amount of coffee in here. I'm not quite at my max fill line, and I'm at 17 and a half grams of coffee, and this has just been a bit of a mess so far but we're gonna be okay. I believe in us. Now this is a uh, programmed dose, as I understand it. So I'm just gonna push my two cup button and we'll hope for the best. See what happens with this. Pre-infusion. Looking like a pretty fast shot. Don't think anyone's surprised that this is a faster shot. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a pretty generous portion. I don't think we're gonna let the volumetrics control it next time. I think we might put the scale underneath because our 17 grams yielded 74 grams of liquid, a bit more than we wanted in a sort of one to two, one to two and a half ratio here. So, so we're not drinking that one. So we'll go two steps finer and then we'll give it a go again. I'll dose maybe 18 grams and I'll aim for like 36 to 40 out. I think, you know, less than 36 would be deeply unwise. And we'll see how long that takes. Okay, I'm gonna try and tease. Oh. Okay, we're at 16.3, we need some more coffee. I just don't know if I can get past these little pincers without 
Oh, damaging things. I hate you so much right now. We're not going to be friends. We're just not going to be friends. When you when you lock the portafilter in, let me just let me just try and explain this. This this portafilter gets incredibly close to the grinding mechanism. Like you couldn't put your hand in there. That's just stupid. Okay, we're gonna be okay though. All gonna be okay. It's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be okay. Let's brew. Pretty fusion. We're not we're not getting much yet. It's 23 seconds into the shot. Oh, there it is. Like, like nectar. Or just like a really slow espresso that's gonna taste awful. Ooh, a little hissing, something's not happy. Well then, what just happened there? Well, I, I suspect a number of terrible things happened at once to yield what we just saw. Now, firstly, the gauge here got up to what it said was like 16 bars, which is which is a lot of pressure. Too much pressure. At those kind of pressures, you compress the cake so much that you compound the problem. Like you make the cake harder to get through, which in this case makes this machine pump water harder. It's a very stupid cycle to get into. You don't want a machine running at really high pressure where you just get your ideal pressure by varying the resistance. That's just, that's just not a good way to work because of the issues with puck compression. And then what you saw at the end with that steamy release was, I, I guess, the water spent too long in contact with the thermoblock because it was flowing too slowly. These things are not particularly accurate. They're designed to heat water at a kind of fixed flow rate. We were obviously much slower than that flow rate, so it got heated more than it should have been. So all in all, everything went wrong with that shot. I will go back a little bit coarser because I went too fine. I go back one coarser and I'll just make sure my dose is like, 17.5 as much as I can with this god awful grinder and then we'll see if we can pull like a decent shot because I think I think together we can achieve anything anyone who's able to withdraw their portafilter without spilling coffee is is a Jedi master of sorts why are we still at 16 bars I mean why why do you hate me all right, we're gonna go, we're gonna go apparently much coarser. We're gonna go much coarser because nothing makes sense and I hate everything about this grinder. This is not a good experience so far. Okay, what will happen now? What will happen now? Oh, pump's gone a little high. This espresso looks terrible. That's still a 34, 35 second shot to hit our ratio. Can't tell you how much I don't want to drink this. I mean, the coffee in was nice. This is a stupid coffee machine. I hate this coffee machine. It's a stupid coffee machine. Look, at this point, the grind is definitely too coarse. You need to grind finer. But because this thing's pump pressure is determined by resistance, you can't get good espresso out of it. Can't be done. Because once you produce adequate resistance, this thing will spike massive pressures at the pump, compress the cake, and choke your shot. You won't be able to get a normal flow rate from your very fine, properly ground espresso ground coffee. It's the stupidest coffee machine we've seen on this channel by a long way. I hate it. I really hate it. I feel like, you know, picking up the portafilter gave me this moment of like, maybe this won't completely suck, but it completely sucks. All of the good ideas belong entirely in the portafilter with its nice rubber bit for tamping. The tamper that comes with it is of course plasticky nonsense, but it's a 299 pound coffee machine. I'm not so weird as to presume that it would be actually good or useful. The water tank seems nice. It's got a nice, lid that's 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 you know good but it can't make good coffee and having a cup tray where if you put cups on top make it really noisy is also stupid it's just sloppily designed buy something better if you want something like this get the sage don't buy this 
This is £299 for a reason, and it's an absolute waste of money. It's terrible value. It is, for what you get, far too expensive. You would be happier with like a mocha pot and, and like a whisk and some, some, I don't know. The steaming on this comes with a little clacky twisty dial thing. Which is, which is weird. There's a little light flashing, so indeed that thermal block is, is heating up. There's a steamy release. It's too hot to make coffee, so it's cooling the system. It's kind of nice that it does it automatically. Probably looks pretty dramatic. It seems to have adequate pressure for steam. It's a single hole tip, which I don't love, but, but I'm sure it could steam adequate milk. Unspectacular, probably, but I mean, you know, to pour into what garbage tasting, disgusting espresso that this thing will produce. Ambiano, why do they even call it? Why don't stick Aldi on the front? Why don't I just give in, be honest about it? Shock horror, cheap supermarket does cheap coffee machine that is cheap and not good. This is offensive to me as a coffee machine. This is why we have climate change issues. Like how much resource, how much energy, how much material went into building this? Monstrosity, to ship it around the world. There's, there's just, this is just waste. I hate it. I, I am just so upset that this existed. I feel stupid that I thought that a 299 pound coffee machine might be fun to look at. I'm just mad now. I'm not gonna give this away on Patreon, I think. I mean, I'll offer it up, but I would suggest that no one really asks for it unless you wanna hack it. If you wanna take this to pieces, rewire it, make it work, add an overpressure valve into the pump line so it, it can't produce stupid pressures. Maybe, maybe you could get some good results out of this. Maybe it's a project for somebody. I don't know, but it's, it's, it's just bad. For some good news, apart from this being a potential Patreon giveaway, every video right now has a coffee giveaway. If you need coffee, if you can't afford coffee, if you're in a difficult situation right now and coffee's part of your life, hit the link up in the description down below. I'll give away 10 bags to 10 people anywhere in the world that I can ship coffee to. And, and uh, I'll do my best to share a little bit of love uh, right now. But actually, if you're watching this and you've got one of these, how's it been for you? Have you had a good experience? Have you pulled good tasting espresso on it? Is that possible? Have you achieved a miracle? Have you got the little gauge to go into the normal place or is it just gushing through just terrible, terrible espresso of terribleness? Let me know down in the comments below. For now, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.